Go ahead, let me bring to the show my next guest this evening, Alejandro Zambrano, Chief Market Strategist, um, ATFX. Good evening, Alejandro, and thank you so much for joining Good evening. us. Thanks so much for having me on. Uh, well, I would like to start uh, exactly with this story and the coronavirus. It looks like it doesn't have any impact uh, on the Forex. Um, do you expect any change from this point of view in the near future? Yeah, I think uh, we will see more of an influence of the coronavirus on uh, the currency markets. But I also say, I also think that we already seen some decent declines in, for example, the Australian dollar versus the USD, and also the New Zealand dollar versus the USD. Because if you think about it, you know, people are right now sheltered at their homes, and they're not going out on the street, they're not consuming, uh, they're taking it very, very easy to protect themselves and their families. So what will most likely happen even if we don't necessarily have like a significant amount of people dead, is that economic activity in China uh, will slow down. And that will directly impact countries like Australia, because Australia's biggest trading partner is uh, the Chinese. So over there already, you can see that currency declining. And I think the momentum can continue. And it wouldn't surprise me if we take out the uh, 2019th low in the Aussie dollar and actually just continue to go lower to levels we saw during the financial crisis. So that is where I will be focusing on. Uh, certainly, uh, this is a very interesting topic. On the other side of uh, this evening, the this evening focus uh, is definitely the Federal Reserve. Of course, nobody expects any uh, rate cut or, or rate hike uh, from Trump, Powell and Co. Uh, but um, on the other side, do you expect any clarification in terms of balance sheet and, of course, inflation target, which has been uh, inflation, of course, the major headache uh, for the central banks in general? Uh, I don't have any high expectations on this meeting, uh, but you never know, they might actually say something that could rattle the markets, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, what they have been doing, as you know, is injecting a lot of money into the market, and that has boosted stock markets in particular. I think that's the number one driver for stock markets. It's not the phase one trade deal. It's all this liquidity, and as well, don't forget that the ECB is on QE to infinity. Now, if you look at the balance sheet over the last few weeks, uh, we saw that the balance sheet is not expanding, and that sort of uh, pretty much matches what we've seen in stock markets a bit. And then as well, we've seen the dollar actually gain on the back, uh, well, not necessarily on the back of the stop of uh, adding liquidity, but you've seen the dollar sort of regaining a bit of its footing as the liquidity has stopped, as the balance sheet is pretty much unchanged over the last few weeks. Uh, if we just look at the balance sheet injections by themselves, they should actually result into the dollar weakening much, much more. But I think because of the corona crisis, uh, uh, coronavirus crisis, we're seeing people going into the dollar instead of selling it. Um, and uh, talking about the dollar index, it's at the 98 mark, inching higher by 0.16% this evening, and euro dollar slightly lower at 1.10. Uh, which is the new target of the euro dollar change? Uh, so for the euro dollar, I mean, I can, we can talk about the dollar index first. And I'm looking at my chart right now, and I think we can go maybe to 98.41. And I think as long as you trade below the high here from the 27, the low from the 27th, which is 97.78. Uh, so as long as you're above that low, we could potentially hit that 97.4 level. If I load my euro USD, you do have a uh, inverse head and shoulders, uh, sorry, normal head and shoulders uh, pattern that triggered a few days ago. If you're looking at your charts, you'll see the left shoulder being the December 17th high and the right shoulder being the January 16th high, and then the head is going to be the December 31st high. Now, we, we breached that trend line, and we already moved uh, towards the target, but the ultimate target for this inverse head and shoulders, let me see. Uh, should be about, uh, let me see here, so just give me a second. Uh, I was you're looking at, yeah, you're looking at maybe uh, 109.50 or so, 109. Uh, well, that's... In the, uh, in the Euro USD. You know, um, I was wondering because after the last uh, Federal Reserve meeting um, where we've heard a pretty accommodative central bank, the dollar index 
decrease um, significantly. Can we expect the same scenario this evening? Uh, I don't think so, but I can tell you what I told my clients and people that read my analysis. So when the market traded below 111, I told them we're triggering that head and shoulders pattern and we're now pretty much in the euro dollar just uh, around the November 29th low. So we declined with a decent 100 pip or so and I told them this is probably a good spot to book profits and then tomorrow morning if we are trading below the November 29th low at 109.80, then we can reestablish short positions uh, on that break. So I would book profits now, and then we'll take a look at this tomorrow because the markets do a ton of funny stuff around these rate meetings. And unfortunately, it's a little bit of a gamble. So if you have some decent profits, uh, like 100 pip is quite a lot nowadays, then I would take that and then just wait until after the event. Uh, you know, um, nobody expects a lot from the Federal Reserve, but it's a completely different story if we talk about uh, Bank of England, which is also going to report monetary policy decision tomorrow. Uh, certainly, it's going to be a very interesting meeting because um, it's going to be also the last one of Mark Carney. Uh, and there are many different opinion, uh, opinions. M many of my guests believe that there is going to be a rate cut and uh, many others, for, for instance, my previous guests, said that he does not expect a rate cut tomorrow, but probably on the next meeting. Uh, what is your opinion instead in terms of uh, Bank of England and um, rate cuts? Uh, that's a very good question. I mean, we've seen the data has not really improved that much. Uh, you have uh, inflation declining quite rapidly. Uh, and then about two weeks ago, we had comments from uh, various Bank of England meeting uh, members telling us that if the data did not improve, then they will cut interest rates. As well, Mark Carney a few months ago, and even, even a few years ago, he said that when we have Brexit, which we're supposed to have on January 31st, then they would cut interest rates to support the economy. So I definitely think they will cut, but it's just you say, will they cut this time around or will they cut later in March? Uh, so it's a bit tricky really. And what I would do, I would just observe, if they tomorrow cut, interest rates and the euro and the pound versus the dollar trades below 129.50 then i would actually turn bearish on that because i think we could trade as low as 126 124 on a break to the 129.50 level uh, in fact, um, that's going to be an extremely important uh, week for the pound, uh, not only because of Bank of England, but also because um, the Brexit is going to happen actually on 31st of, of January, uh, which is by the end of this week. Uh, it's been quite a roller coaster 2019 uh, for, for the pound. We saw many swings, many ups and downs. Uh, so, but I shall say that we do see quite um, stable pound for a little bit of time already at 1.30, not moving too much, uh, staying between 1.29 and 1.30 against the dollar. Uh, what is your forecast for the pound in, in the upcoming quarter? Let's say, I know it's very difficult to say because it depends a lot uh, on the government, on the parliament, on the Brexit, on, a, on a, a, anything, but um, what, what are you suggesting? So I think uh, it's a little bit binary. That's sort of the way the market looks like it works. So th I would focus more on the key levels that matter, like the 129 level. If we take that out, we'll go much lower. If we remain above it, we can easily go up to something like 132. Uh, so it's more of that level. Now it comes down to Brexit. When you speak with people, most people are aware that we're gonna have Brexit. So I don't think there's gonna be like a big event on January 31st. Rather, the focus is going to come back on Brexit by the end of the year. Uh, I think that's when that's going to, I'm going to talk more about that. So it's more going to be about the, uh, any rate cuts, which given the way the economy is going, uh, seems quite likely. So if you look at it from that perspective, I would be selling the pound, but I wouldn't be selling it today. You need to wait for the break to 129. Take that out. We can go down to, I said, 126, 124, trade above 129.50, and we can probably trade it back up to 132 again. Uh, well, that's certainly a very interesting. And on the other side, uh, what kind of price range can we expect um, for, for the euro pound change, which is so far 0 0.8456, um, slightly lower this evening by 0.04%? 
Okay, that's a very good question. So let me load my charts here. Uh, so from a purely technical perspective, you know, we had an interesting break just a few months ago when the price traded below the 2019th uh, low. And if you treat it like a big rectangle pattern, then if we do manage to trade below the 2019th low, then, you know, realistically, you might even go down to the 80 level, if not maybe 78 uh, in, in euro pound. So if you load your chart, you'll see a big sideways pattern. We traded below it. And if we do trade again below the 2019th low, which is currently at one, uh, sorry, 0 0.8277, then again, that could probably cause the currency to decline to 80 uh, or the 78 level. Uh, well, that's certainly uh, very interesting. Alejandro, I was wondering um, if you can, how can I say, sh share your opinion uh, regarding um, the currencies to watch, uh, because certainly this is going to be very interesting for our viewers. For instance, as I said, 2019 uh, has been a difficult year um, for, for, for the pound, uh, for the Turkish lira, for, for the Argentine peso. Uh, so which are the currencies to watch, in your opinion, in 2020? So I, th I think the clearest case right now is the one we uh, talked about earlier, which is the Australian dollar. Just because the number of uh, new uh, people that are getting uh, confirmed to have the virus is probably going to continue to rise. And the growth rate is just staggering. So the growth rate of number of people infected is about 35% per day. So effectively, if you take that, raise that by 31 days, then you're looking at millions of people potentially having this virus. Uh, if you do it literally on your calculator, you'll figure out that that number is about 65 million people having the coronavirus in 31 days. So the next few days are going to be really interesting to see if that growth rate continues. And if it does, I'll tell you, there's probably going to be much more panic in the market. The Aussie dollar should continue to trade lower. Uh, and, and that's really what I would uh, put my focus on. Uh, if there's also other currencies as well, like the dollar versus the Swedish kroner, the dollar versus the Norwegian kroner. We all know that the Scandies tend to suffer in times of crisis. So that is some other currency pairs uh, I would look at. And, and that's sort of the theme we have right now. And um, what about the dollar and uh, Japanese yen? So that's a very good one. So the, the, I think the, the dollar yen is sort of pulled higher because of stock markets being as high as they are. And that's obviously on the back of the liquidity uh, that the Federal Reserve has been adding to the system. Um, and yes, you can see a trade lower, but if you look at it from a purely technical perspective, uh, you can see that the dollar yen is actually trending higher since pretty much October last year. And it's never good to trade against uh, an upward rising trend. On the other hand, the, the Aussie dollar has been going down and it went down for most of last year and it will and it's just effectively resuming that trend. Uh, so I'm much more comfortable selling the Aussie dollar. Some other stuff as well, I know it's, it's, it's not maybe the sort of currencies that you cover, but digital currencies and cryptocurrencies, you've seen some nice moves there as well with Bitcoin going higher. You got Litecoin very close to trade to uh, new levels as well. So, so that could be another venue uh, if people find that the volatility and normal currencies is a bit too low. Uh, well, I mean, the topic with cryptocurrencies is extremely interesting. You know, I was wondering, actually, I want to ask you, this is definitely off script, but uh, can we perceive the Bitcoin as a safe haven? Because uh, when this coronavirus stuff happened, also when we had uh, the huge tensions between US and Iran, uh, we, did so, uh, we did see a little bit of, how can I say, a pivot in terms of safe havens and also in the currency markets. Uh, so can we perceive, uh, in particular, the Bitcoin uh, as a safe haven? And I just wanted to point out for our viewers that, um, as you said, Bitcoin is trading slightly higher, 9,361 against the dollar. Yeah, uh, I think it's not like a true safe haven, uh, but you can definitely see uh, the currencies or digital currencies and cryptos going higher. And you're right, when there was talk uh, of potentially being war between the US and Iran, then there was a lot of talk of uh, Bitcoin going higher. And as well, if you look at historical patterns, uh, Bitcoin tends to go higher in times of crisis uh, like this. And it has to do with the fact, if you look at the places like Iran, they don't have access to the financial markets like many other countries have. 
So for them, it's easier just to go into crypto. So I think that kickstarted things and that lifted uh, Bitcoin out of its slumber, out of the range it was in. And that started to cause a bit of an uptrend. And then, as you know, well, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but a lot of crypto trading happens on momentum. So when people start to see that Bitcoin, for example, is up with 44% this year, then people buy more. And the more it goes up, the stronger it goes upwards until, of course, people realize that the gains are a bit absurd and start to book profits. So, yeah, it started with U.S. Iran and then it's now been continued with the coronavirus crisis. Uh, and that's lifting things. And the way the momentum has shifted now in crypto markets, I do think they can continue to gain uh, over the next few weeks and months possibly. You're absolutely right, but I just wanted to point out that China uh, is an extremely important actor in terms of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So since there is um, a major forecast that um, considering the coronavirus outbreak, um, there is going to be um, a big impact on Chinese GDP. Uh, so if this was to happen, can we expect also decline of the Bitcoin or you don't think there is a correlation between the two things? I mean, I think there's definitely some people looking at the virus and then saying, you know, uh, let's buy some Bitcoins. I mean, uh, there's just definitely people scared. Uh, it's quite interesting, actually. Uh, I was looking into buying masks, uh, you know, the masks <laughs> you see on TV. And on Amazon before you could buy certain masks and so it would literally be one to two day delivery here in London. Now this was last week. So when I did try to place an order on that, it told me I needed to wait until February 10th to February 20th to uh, get hold of these masks. I managed to get them, hold of them uh, by going to my local uh, uh, DIY store. But, but there is some panic and people are, I wouldn't call it panic, but there's some fear and there are, I, I'm sure that some people, in particular people that love cryptos, they do see these connections. So they are buying into this, I think. Uh, now, now, the reason why I don't want to say strongly that the Chinese miners and so on is going to buy or not, or the, or the Chinese local people, is because there's been tremendous uh, crackdown on cryptos uh, in China. And, you know, when I speak with people I know over there, you know, they, they do tell me that the, uh, interest has died down a bit. It's um, not like it used to be. Certainly, that's a very interesting topic and I'm sure we're going to talk about it in the future uh, shows, but I want to ask you a very last question and it's regarding um, the volatility um, in currency markets because we saw a little bit of increase of the VIX index, which of course is related to the equity markets. Uh, can we expect the same uh, for, for the Forex? Uh, I wouldn't know. I mean, you need to be very picky. Like, you can't just be betting on general mark, uh, currency volatility, unfortunately, because we are in an era where you have central bankers trying to uh, manipulate the currency exchange rate. You got presidents like President Trump telling us when he thinks the dollar is too weak or when he thinks it's too strong. So everybody's starting, trying to influence, and they are indeed influencing the markets. So we need to sort of uh, cherry pick what we want to trade. There's a lot of professional traders. They don't trade things like the euro dollar anymore. They trade things like dollar Turkish lira, dollar Sri African rand, the Scandi. So we need to venture out from the majors if we want to have uh, see some movements and and personally, I think better opportunities to actually make money uh, trading currencies. Uh, Alejandro, I promise that was the last question, but we're getting some questions from our viewers. So let me ask you really last question. Can you um, give us uh, an advice regarding a long-term investment? Any long-term investment? That's, that's a good question. Okay, so uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I think there's no middle. There's no middle. Either you are very relatively active you, you watch shows like these ones, you do your technical analysis, you stay on top of things and you move relatively in and out quickly, or you just take the long-term view. And usually for most people, I tell them to take the long-term view. And what does that mean? It effectively means get yourself an ETF, like the S&P 500 ETF, and you buy uh, a little bit every month, uh, a certain percentage of your salary or something like that, and then you just leave it there uh, for years. Every 
10th year or so, we have a bigger crash, maybe a 30% decline or so. When that happens, you double up your monthly purchases into this ETF. And then you just keep it there. And when it's time to retire, when you need the money, that's when you start to take them out. And you don't sell them uh, when we have a major crisis like the 2009, 2008 uh, financial crisis. That's what I suggest. So either you go that way uh, or you become more active like we are doing here. All right. Thank you very much for this conversation. Alejandro Zambrano, Chief Market Strategist, ATFX. Thank you for joining us and have a great evening. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, well, guys, we're heading for a very short commercial break, but you better stick around because up next is the Fed press conference uh, and, of course, we're switching to our Italian channel.